Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey guys, what's going on? So I am here checking out the Electric City Bike from Electric Bike Technologies. It's actually a fairly generic sounding name from one of the more authentic companies <laughs> and people you'll meet. So I'm actually here in the Chamonix Park in Pennsylvania uh, checking out this bike. The guys at the shop are really excited to show it off and has some really cool features, particularly a motor that I haven't had a whole lot of time testing out until now. So I'm pretty excited too to show it off to you. So let's go ahead and jump into the bike and tell you a little bit about who it's for. All right, so I'm here with my man, Alec. Alec, how you doing? Mikey, great to see you again. Yeah, so we've been checking out lots of different electric trikes with the guys over here in Pennsylvania because they have quite a few different brands uh, from this one spot. Yeah, absolutely. So Electric Bike Technologies, we've been offering the e-bike kit system since about 2008. Uh, we offer electric trikes at electrictrike.com and the Liberty Trike at libertytrike.com and Mikey here is checking out our newest offerings which are the bikes at electricbikestore.com we've got five new models now to address specific customer needs each one is optimized uh, to help you get a specific job done and we're really excited about their capabilities wonderful so yeah this one as you can imagine the electric city bike is exactly made as an electric city bike <laughs> it's pretty well equipped uh, with some commuting accessories the rack in the back the fenders with the integrated lights you know the step through frame it's pretty pretty approachable you know the swept back handlebars nice wide seat so yeah this bike is totally outfitted for some pretty pretty easygoing city use again the step through and kind of like the relaxed position is kind of like a little bit towards a cruiser but mostly that's kind of to give you comfort as you're riding around in the city and I love city bikes. Um, electric city bikes are something that I really enjoy. I commute a lot um, with electric bikes, so I have a lot of experience there to kind of impart as we go over this bike and some of the components and everything. So yeah, this bike is pretty, pretty good, uh, all things overall. But I want to get into the specs and I want to kind of break it apart a little bit to kind of showcase what the capabilities are. So let's go ahead and jump into the mechanical specifications. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the nose of the bike. Uh, so up front you do have some 700c wheels so these are a pretty tall uh, diameter for the wheel and the tire uh, so the tire is 700 by 38 uh, that's the size of it actually has some puncture resistance in the tire itself that's kind of like some extra padding between the tread and the tube on the inside that prevents some punctures from getting through um, on the edge of the tire you also have a reflective sidewall which is nice because if you didn't know a large portion of the accidents that occur to someone on a bicycle comes with the vehicle being hit from the side so having some reflection on the side is really a nice feature so on the wheels up here these are a double walled uh, eyelet uh, wheel with a 14 gauge spokes coming into the 100 millimeter hub right here in the middle the brakes are pretty cool these are a dual piston uh, mechanical disc brake uh, which is really nice. I like mechanical disc brakes because I can work on them. <laughs> uh, they're pretty good. Uh, you just have this cable here that's being pulled up from the handlebars and that has the dual pistons which squeeze in the pads on this 180 millimeter rotor uh, disc up front. So I like them because these brakes have some really effective stopping power which is, you know, it's necessary when you're on a bike that's going fast because uh, this bike does go faster than your average regular bicycle without a motor. Uh, so it's really nice to have those brakes. They're really comfortable. Like, I guess peace of mind is what I would say when you're biking around, especially in the city. You don't have to worry about your brakes not working because these are going to provide a good amount of power for you to stop. And they're relatively easy to work on compared to the hydraulics. So yeah, brownie points for me on that one. <laughs> so coming up to the fork, uh, this is a pretty good comfort fork, has about 80 millimeters of travel uh, right here on there. And this is a coil uh, spring fork. Uh, so you do have a lockout and a preload adjustment up on the crown of the fork there. The purpose of the fork is to kind of soften up the blows as you're kind of going over potholes or bumps in the city. So it's not definitely not intended for off-road use. I mean, I guess you could, but the tires would kind of be um, underutilized in that sense. Um, but yeah, this kind of absorbs the, the abrasions that you get as you're riding around, kind of keeps the tension from off of the tiny bones in the hand, uh, which is pretty good, a nice thing to do. Uh, so continuing on, there is a plastic fender that is attached to the fork up here, and it also goes up into the crown. It's a pretty solid plastic. 
I've seen plastic fenders that are pretty thin. You know, they almost feel like they're a McDonald's cup with how thick they are. These are nice and sturdy. I like these a lot and they have some metal mounting points, uh, not only to the bicycle, but also to the brackets itself that hold it on, uh, which is really nice. I like them a lot and they also don't weigh terribly much. And also up on the arc of the fork, you have a nice metal mounting point for the headlight. Uh, we'll kind of talk about the headlight a little bit when we get into the electric into the electric system but i actually really like that metal mount it's it might be the funniest thing but that little metal mount it makes a big difference i've seen bikes that have a plastic mount for the light and i can't tell you how many times i've seen those break <laughs> so having that metal mount there is really nice because it means that the light will stay there and you're good for years to come uh, without having to risk that so uh, so continuing on with some of the mechanical features uh, you do have a one and an eighth uh, headset up in here uh, and the stem is actually pretty cool uh, because it does have a hundred millimeter extension here It's kind of obstructed from view by the display But it actually extends out quite a bit and it does have this adjustment here So you can change it from 40 degrees to negative 40 based on the zero line Which is not parallel with the ground. Of course. It's just kind of there in line with this with the headset uh, But that's pretty nice. We actually have it extended straight out so that we could measure the total length of the reach uh, earlier, but you can get a five millimeter, twist that and adjust the stem. So it brings the handlebars a little bit closer to you. It also brings them up a little bit higher and you can also rotate the handlebars within this axis here if you want to change the position in that realm. And of course the display mount uh, kind of hides all of that. So it's nice and tucked in there, pretty good. So continuing on with the controls, these are the brake levers for the uh, mechanical disc brake. They're a nice big four finger lever with kind of like the rubberized edge on it, uh, which is pretty good. So these brake levers also have an electric signal that's being sent to the motor. Uh, so these are actually specific brake handles that are meant for the electric system. The purpose of it is that when you're braking and you squeeze on the handle, that sends a signal to the motor to cut off power so that you're not fighting against the motor as you hit the brakes. So with the brake handles pulled, theoretically you could throttle, you could pedal, and the motor will not engage. I mean, mechanically it still operates because it's always a bicycle, but nonetheless, that's a nice safety feature that they've added there. Uh, so the grips for the bike is pretty darn comfy. This is like a faux leather. I guess you would call this a uh, free conscience leather uh, with the stitching on the side and also ribbed across the very top of it. Pretty good because they have this ergonomic little cutout right there. So it kind of grips your palm to lower the chance of fatigue uh, as you're riding around. So things like this, the grip and also the swept back handlebars and the adjustable stem and the suspension up on the front, things like this you might not think, but they actually do add a lot to the comfort of the bike and a lot to the overall comfort of just riding the bike at all. Meaning that you would stay out on a bike like this for a longer duration because you don't feel it in, in your hands. You don't feel it in your arms as you're shaking around. So if you want a bike that's able to go a long distance, a lot of times, uh, and I speak from experience, <laughs> a lot of times the bike will go plenty far, but it's really the rider that actually gives out first. Uh, so with this kind of setup, you can actually kind of challenge the battery a little bit and see who can go further. <laughs> but anyways, let's continue on. Okay, so continuing on in the cockpit area, on the other side of the brakes, of course, this is just a mirrored brake for the other side. There's nothing uh, terribly different about it, other than it has a bell that's built into the brake handle. <laughs> which is nice. It's kind of tucked away hidden in there. Uh, so you do, it does have a bell, even though there's no big, you know, honking uh, doorbell up here. It's nice and tucked in, has a nice high pitch to it, which is cool. Uh, these are some of the electric controls. We'll kind of get into that in a second, but it is kind of taking up the cockpit area uh, right there. But you still have plenty of real estate if you wanted to attach like a water bottle or a phone mount, uh, something along those lines. All right, so continuing down, uh, the frame has a nice drop for the top tube. Uh, usually you see on a bike it starts up here at the stem and comes all the way down over to around this area. Uh, but on this bike they have a nice uh, sweep swoop there. And this is about 23 and a half inches tall. Uh, so that's about the height that you need to get your foot over in order to get into this bike. And I say into rather than onto, because <laughs> a lot of bikes with the bar over on that end, you got to swing your leg up over and up mount onto the bike. But with a nice step over frame like this, they're becoming much more common. You can get into the bike by just putting your foot up and over and then you're ready to rock. Now you do have a quick release uh, for the seat post. So right now it's in a relatively high position as I was riding it. But when you undo that lever, the seat post can come down. You adjust it with another hand that isn't holding a camera <laughs> and then you can lock it into position right there. Uh, so while we're at it, uh, this is a rigid seat post. Uh, so it's just a big long pipe that holds the seat. 
and you know that's not terribly comfortable if you want to soften up the ride just a little bit more you can actually replace this with a suspension seat post and that is a seat post that has a mechanism inside of it that will compress that does increase the minimum saddle height so if you have some short legs and it's tough to get onto the bike as it is with the saddle in the lowest position adding a suspension seat post will kind of increase the minimum height yeah you know somewhere around there so that's one thing to consider but if comfort is really what you're going for this is a really good platform to start with but that kind of customization can make a pretty good difference so the seat itself is about eight and a half inches wide. It has a nice wide footprint to it and a pretty good nose. Uh, this is like a vinyl cover, but it's kind of like some gel on the inside. It's pretty comfortable all in all. I like it. I think that for long distance, like I'm thinking, you know, five hours or so, this might be too much of a seat. But like I said before, generally people aren't going to be on it for five hours at a time, myself included. So that's kind of a threshold you can kind of keep in mind uh, for something like that. The seat post tube is relatively short, like I said, for that minimum height if you wanted to use this bike for someone with short legs. Uh, this is, of course, the motor mount and the battery built into the down tube. We'll kind of talk about that in a minute. Uh, let's go ahead and jump to the other side. But uh, one last thing, this is a mirrored brake from the one in the front. This is a 180 millimeter rotor, again, with the dual piston brakes coming up to the front. No surprises there. Uh, same thing with the wheel, the tire. This is the same uh, size. And it is because it's a mid-drive bike, you can actually switch out the back wheel just the same as you would uh, the, the front wheel or any wheel for any kind of other bike. There's no surprises. There's no cords or cables or anything. Same sort of wheel set. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the gearing real quick. Uh, so this is using a Shimano Acera uh, derailleur, and that's of course going up to the front, and we'll kind of get to the shift, the indexer in a minute. Uh, but Alec, can you tell me a little bit about the uh, the gearing here? Yeah, so we've got a one by eight system here, meaning that you have one gear in front and eight in the back, so you have one shifter to shift through, so no double shifting. Uh, we've got a bash guard on the outside and a 44 tooth chain ring, and then on the back you've got an 11 to 30 tooth cassette. Uh, so this is a gearing that's optimized for uh, starting out from a stop and then getting up to a high speed without too much complicated shifting while you're doing it. Great. Well, thank you very much, Alec. So yeah, that's a, a little bit about the gearing and this is a pretty good set uh, from the Shimano Acer. I have some on my personal bike uh, at home and let's talk about the indexer just a little bit. So you do have this windowed gear indicator uh, up on the handlebars here and you have the thumb shifter to go down in number uh, and you also have this little trigger that's kind of hidden back in there where you can press that to go up so these are pretty pretty precise you know you press those in and boom that's that's where you're at you don't have to worry about choosing a band or anything like that or having to clunk it into position they're pretty precise uh, so continuing on in the back of the bike um, so we talked a little bit about the gearing and the brakes, the tire and the wheels, all the same. Uh, this rack uh, mounts onto the frame itself. So it's a bolt-on rack that I honestly like because I've seen racks that have, um, that have broken in the past from heavy load. That's usually myself overextending and thinking I can carry more than I can and I wind up breaking the rack. Uh, so I like the bolt-on ones because they're fixable, <laughs> replaceable. Uh, so it's pretty good. Uh, but I doubt that's going to happen to you because you're probably not going to carry like 80 pounds worth of bricks home from Home Depot the way that I did one time. But that's a different story for a different day. Uh, so I like this rack. Uh, this is a pretty good rack that has some pretty nice gauges for uh, the strength of the metal here. And it mounts on four positions uh, on the seat stay here. It kind of has this bended uh, sort of curve here. And this is a regular rack that can accommodate traditional panniers. Uh, so it has a fairly, uh, fairly good sized tubing that can handle the clips from even like French panniers, which are notoriously thin. Uh, again, you have a plastic fender on the back, and this one has some pretty good mounting points for it as well. It has the points right here by the kickstand, another one up here uh, on the seat stay, and also the brace that's coming in from the back. Uh, so it's nice and strong mounted on there. You don't have to worry about it, you know, flopping around or rubbing up against the tire, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, there is an integrated light while we're back here. So this light is actually integrated into the battery pack. So you don't have to worry about popping it out and switching AA batteries or anything. It's already hooked into the battery that the bike uses to propel itself. Uh, one, one compromise on this bike is the nuts that they have on the wheels, both in the front and the back. These I think are about a 15 millimeter nut to get the wheel on and off. So you don't have a quick release 
uh, for these wheels for either the front or the back and you know that's one thing they probably did for uh, cost savings I presume uh, try to keep everything you know squared away but that's one thing I would like to see you know one of the trade-offs there uh, one last thing to mention is down in this area uh, I do have the metal uh, well go pedals these are nice these are gonna last for quite a long time and the 170 millimeter cranks in the back uh, so the kickstand is mounted in the center of the bike immediately behind the motor and this is a traditional place to put a kickstand uh, but it does uh, offer the person a little bit more uh, dance lessons as they're getting the bike in and out of a garage because let's go ahead and get the pedal out of the way when you push the bike backwards uh, say maneuvering it around a car then the pedals go backwards as well and then it locks the bike into position as you're pushing it backwards so you push it backwards and that crank uh, kind of fights you as it's stuck against the kickstand there so you do get some kind of a pedal lock sort of position there um, it's not too tough to get out of the way you know you push it up with your foot get the kickstand and then you're ready to go from there but you know that's one of those things that you know you got to make choices when you're making a bike you know can't please everybody so uh, another thing to consider is that for myself I have relatively big feet and if I have my feet with the ball of my foot contacted uh, right underneath the pedal uh, that's where you should be pedaling by the way on the ball of your feet but if you're just jumping on the bike really quick for city riding or something quick just to kind of get around say uh, a parking lot or so a lot of times people put the middle of their foot right there on on the pedal and as you're maneuvering at low speeds you can kind of get your toe kind of caught on that um, on that fender you know it's a, it's kind of a rare thing to happen but it can so kind of be aware of that again this is a plastic fender so it's not going to like cut the tire by any means it's just going to be a little, you know if you come into contact with that it might be a little startling but now you know so it's probably not going to affect you at all so let's go ahead and jump into the electric system my favorite part okay for the electric system i kind of touched on it a tiny bit with the light being integrated into the main battery pack as well as the front light is the same way uh, so this has a really nice led front light with an on off switch if you want to kind of override that uh, up in the front uh, but those come on uh, with the press of a button up on the display uh, but as kind of a concept, this is a mid-drive electric bike, meaning that the motor is right in the middle of the bike. You can see it here kind of consuming a large area uh, where you would normally see a small little tube for a bottom bracket that goes in between. Uh, so this is a DAPU uh, motor. The actual model number is called a M250. Um, however, this is capable of putting out 350 watts nominal up to about 500 or so. Uh, so that's what you're looking at for the motor capacity or capability. Uh, this is tied into a 48 volt battery uh, that's mounted right here on the down tube. And this does come out. I'll need an extra hand uh, to kind of get it out there. But use this specific key to unlock the battery and then pull up on the latch and then the battery itself kind of comes off of the frame. So that is locked into position. Somebody can't do that without the specific key, uh, but it just kind of rolls back in there, kind of clicks into position, pull the key out and you're ready to rock. Uh, the battery does have a little indicator up on the top. You press that button and it kind of gives you an estimate as to battery power. We'll talk a little bit more about how the motor feels when we get into the ride portion, but I have had the chance to ride it uh, before filming immediately right now, and it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> I think you're gonna like it. Uh, so this motor does have the 48 volt capacity, uh, more so than a lot of mid drives, which cap out at 36. Uh, so it does put out a fair amount of power. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of a teaser. 720 watts at the peak. 720 watts at the peak? Yeah, 48 volt, 15 amp controller. So you get 720 watts for your peak uh, current on that, that guy. Oh, nice. So yeah, that's the way that they have it set up because if, if you didn't know when a company like electric bike technologies, when they get the motor, they can kind of customize the, the output that the motor is doing and also some of the features that it has. So this one is a torque based pedal assist system, uh, which is nice. It has a cadence sensor built into it as well, but it primarily relies on torque for, um, rider input to actually engage the motor. Uh, so let's kind of jump up to the controls and show you how to interact with it. So hopefully you can see through the glare. Um, it's kind of it's a nice bright day uh, out here despite the cloud cover. So let's go ahead and turn on the display by pressing the power button. And it kind of lights up and says electric bike technologies and comes into this really pretty blue uh, motif that kind of has this automotive styling to it. So you have your speed right here and that also increases uh, as you ride as you can imagine and it has this speedometer sort of look to it where it goes up to about 30 miles an hour and it also shows you the battery percentage right here we're rocking at 100 percent 
And the pedal assist level is right there smack dab in the middle um, on the bottom. So right there it says number one and you can press the remote switch up or down to control how much pedal assist you're getting as you pedal the bike. On the lower left and right from that side, you can see the total odometer and also the trip set. And those cycle through by pressing the information button on the remote switch. So that will cycle through average speed, max speed, time, things like that. There is also a light button on the remote. When you press that light button just once, you don't have to press and hold or anything. Press it once and that will turn on the front light, the rear light. It'll also change the backlight of the display to be a little more dim. You know, assuming that you're biking in a dark place with the lights, you probably don't want the screen flashing too brightly at you, which is a nice touch. They kind of put that all together. Uh, so one last thing to talk about is the settings menu. And if you press the plus and minus button and hold them down for a second, you can get into some of the settings. And these are customizable for the user, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. We've got a couple cool settings in here um, that may be appropriate. Uh, one thing that you can get in here easily and change is the maximum speed limit. So let's say you wanted to cap it at a slower or a higher top speed, you can just enter in here and change that right away. Another thing you can do that's interesting is you can change the assist level function. So if I open the assist level here, right now I've got level one set at 50% all the way up to level five at 96%, but I can change that to be say seven or nine individual levels. And then I can change the percentage of assist at each level if I want more or less in general. So you can customize the power usage pretty easily. Awesome. Uh, honestly, I've been doing electric bikes for a while. I haven't seen anything that can customize quite that much uh, at the user level. I've seen things where, you know, you take it to the bike shop and they have a program, they plug it into a computer, that kind of thing. But even then, this kind of customization available for the user is quite rare. <laughs> so it's nice to get that from these guys here in Pennsylvania. You can call them up and just ask them about it and they can walk you through that. So that, that itself is, you know, a pretty good feature about the bike in general. So. Yeah, we've talked about the electric system. We've talked about uh, kind of like the features of it. Let's go ahead and jump on the bike and show you how it actually rides. So here we are on the city bike pedaling along. It's pretty smooth. I mean, I like, I like that torque based pedal assist. I'm not terribly high. I'm actually in pedal assist level number one right now. Let's go ahead and crank it up a little bit. We'll get to level three, kind of slow down a little bit. Yeah, pretty good brakes, you know? Okay, the brakes got some good power to them. and kind of modulate it you know you can kind of squeeze on the brakes just a little bit you know kind of get the pads engaged uh, before you slam on them okay so here we are level three okay so yeah it picks up pretty nice I mean level three does have a little bit of guts to it uh, let's go ahead and go all the way full bore into level five <laughs> okay so yeah the pedal assist does have a little bit of guts to it and it's got a good torque sensor you know it picks up very quickly you don't have to actually like move the pedals in any kind of you know segment of a, of a rotation the way that a cadence would uh, you just have to get tension on there uh, so let's go ahead and press okay so it does matter what gear you're in uh, for the torque sensor uh, so if you if you're fine changing gears then this would be a really good setup for you if gears are a little intimidating you can rely on the throttle however the throttle is going to engage the mid-drive motor which is great that's that's already a pretty good uh, feature that not not whole lot of electric bikes have on high end but when you engage the throttle on a mid-drive motor that engages the chain and the chain is just going to spin the back wheel depending on what gear you're sitting in uh, so you will have to change gears and let's see let's go ahead and test this out okay we're getting a little faster about 15 miles an hour or so this bike does not have a uh, shift detection uh, built into it uh, so shift detection is a feature in which when you shift gears under power of the motor the motor can detect the shifting and therefore the motor will actually cut off power for a split second to reduce the strain on the chain. It also smooths out the shifting uh, so it's not so abrupt as you shift gears uh, under power. But see, if you're under full power and switch gears, yeah, that one doesn't, uh, yeah. So this bike doesn't have shift detection. So like a normal bike, I would recommend um, again like a normal bike just kind of letting off on the pedaling for a little bit or the throttle whichever one to kind of give the system a little bit of leeway to change gears more comfortably without adding too much strain to it because what that's going to do is it's going to wear out your chain a little faster if you are gunning it constantly and switching gears constantly 
Um, so if you're doing both of those things, the chain will wear out over time. It's going to be harder to shift gears and adjusting the derailleur uh, won't do the trick because the chain will be kind of worn. You can replace the chain. I mean, it's a bike part. It's, you know, nothing that a bike shop can't do. Um, but nonetheless, that's something that you could run into if you plan on using this for long term, uh, which I hope so because, you know, I've used a motor system from this company before. It was a hub drive motor and it lasted for at least 4,000 miles or so before um, well, actually the battery died before that. <laughs> the motor just kept going and going. Uh, so I have a lot of great things to say uh, about Dapu motors uh, and in general. Uh, this motor system is a little, is little newer to me. Uh, the 350 watts of power is really nice. Um, I don't have anything too aggressive of a hill to try it on, um, but it gets up to speed really good. And it does have a 20 mile an hour top speed from the get-go. Uh, as Alec was saying, you can adjust that um, as a user. I think it's a great choice. I think they put a good package together. Uh, so yeah, fun stuff all around. Let's go ahead and put you down pointing towards the motor. I know I've kind of talked for a little bit long here, but let's go ahead and point you down towards the motor and you can kind of get an, an idea for kind of like the, uh, the power system and what it can do. All right, so I've got you pointed down at the motor and I've got the assist cranked up all the way to level five. Let's go ahead and take it for a spin. All right, for the last little stretch, we got up to about 20 miles an hour there. The top speed is pretty comfortable. It doesn't have like an aggressive wall. It was actually kind of nice to cruise around at 20 miles an hour. I would say that the, the lack of shift detection on this bike was definitely uh, present. I kind of know what I'm looking for because I've reviewed a lot of bikes, but it's a little, uh, I don't know, it's got quite a bit of tension when you switch gears at full power. Like a normal bike, you'd probably want to relax full pedaling while you switch gears. You know, that's a very normal thing for bicycles in general. But yeah, overall, I really like the power curve. You know, it feels really good as you're accelerating. All right, guys, thanks for checking out the electric city bike with me. It's actually really fun. I like this motor system. It's definitely a new player in the field. So I think it's been a really good choice for this setup. I think it's great as a total package. So yeah, if you want to check out the full review for this bike, including all the specifications and all the measurements, go to electricbikereview.com where you can see all of that. You can also compare this with lots of other models and brands, both outside and also the ones that are associated with these guys over here at Electric Bike Technologies. So they have some other two wheelers as well as the electrictrike.com, which is also their gig. So yeah, you can also go there and participate in the forums if you'd like and kind of ask a question, participate in the community, that kind of thing. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Ride safe.